in this video we're going to take a look at operating cash flow which is one of the most important numbers in a company's accounts. Many investors pay a great deal of attention to operating cash flow as it gives vital clues to an investor trying to assess the health and value of a company. So what is it? Well it's simply the amount of cash that a company generates from its normal operations. For example, if you are a retailer like Walmart or Debenhams, the bulk of your operating cash flow will come from the difference between the sale price of an item and how much it costs you to sell it. The operating cash flow shares a lot of similarities with EBITDA, that's earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization. And typically these numbers are not hugely different, that's why I say they're very similar. The difference is due to working capital. Now, I can't assume you know what working capital is. You'll find that one of the problems with learning accounting is that you have to learn multiple things at once. Eventually you will piece it all together. So let's take a very quick look at working capital. I have a video that explains this in detail and I'll link to it in the comments. For now we'll take working capital to be the difference between current assets and current liabilities. Refer to the formula on screen. The word current simply means that it should be off the company's books within a year. So a current asset is something that is expected to be sold or consumed within one year. Now we can see the formula for operating cash flow. So operating cash flow equals the net income plus non-cash expenses. This is typically depreciation and amortization mainly that's the DA part of EBITDA, plus changes in working capital. So that's the fundamental formula for operating cash flow. So let's look at some applications and how operating cash flow is useful to an investor. As alluded to in the introduction, working capital is very useful. The main use is that it can reveal dodgy accounting. For example, a company may generate huge profits but very little cash flow. This may indicate a problem and you should be very sceptical about the source of the profit when it is not backed up by strong cash flows. This is why I say it gives you a more realistic idea of a company's health. Consider a retailer that owns its own stores. If the property market rockets, the company will report huge profits but its, operation, its operating cash flow won't be huge. So when you go into those numbers and analyze them, you'll see that the core business is not nearly as profitable as the overall profit figures would indicate. So, the other thing you need to be aware of is that a company's cash flow is what is used to expand its business. So a company that is not generating much cash flow will need to get its expansion capital from somewhere else, usually a bank. And finally, now that you know what operating cash flow is, you can't just believe the cash flow statement. There are tricks that companies have used to make their numbers bigger. The classic one is extending the time taken to pay suppliers while collecting the money that's owed to you faster. You see how that would increase the operating cash flow? Think about it. You're, ex you're bringing in money faster and paying it out slower. It's really a farce but it gives the illusion of a, of a higher operating cash flow. So hopefully you understand the basic ideas of operating cash flow and uh, thank you for watching.